Okay, so this is a little video because we do. Do you know what they're all talking about in the background? They're all discussing, discussing their favourite crisps. Sophia, what's going on over there? Uh, performing in Twelfth Night? Yeah. Oh, cool. A varied career. Yeah. Um, I've been persuaded to record this. Um, when I say persuaded, <coughs> um, payment is coming in the form of some prawn cocktail crisps, apparently. So if you're watching this video back, um, just remember to bring along payment to room 50 of some crisps. Any variety really will do. I'm not a chocolate person. Now, yeah. where are we? Hello, Faith. It's nice to see you. You all right? Good luck. And we don't have Sarah Lily. Uh, not Sarah Lily, she's a different class. Oh. Carla. Carla sits there. Sarah Lily sits there in my other class. Carla and Jess is moving house. Yeah. Right. And Willow is not here. Okay. Well, so Carla, Willow and Jess, this one's for you. They can hear you now saying that. <laughs> that was Maddie slash Maisie asking, can we hear? Is there anybody there? Madam, young, young, young fellow swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He takes on him to understand so much and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were asleep. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, lady? He's fortified against any denial. So we see here that in his wooing, her wooing, forgive me, Viola is very steadfast and absolutely refusing to move. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so. And he says he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench but he'll speak with you. Now, this seems to pique Olivia's interest. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. Now, is Malvolio there being deliberately obtuse? Or does Malvolio just not get the kind of question that is being asked? Okay, what manner of man? Of very ill manner. He'll speak with you, will you or no? Of what personage and years is he? Eh, not yet old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. As a squash is before tis a peas cod, or a codling when tis almost an apple, tis with him in standing water between boy and man. He's very well favoured, and he speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk was scarce out of him. What has Olivia heard here? that makes her now say, let him approach. What she heard. Billy. He's not an average man. He's not an average man. Good. What might she be particularly interested in? Katie? He's young. He's young. And where's that come from? Where do we know that she's interested in a younger man? When Sir Toby is persuading Sir Andrew to stay in Act 1, Scene 3, he says she has told us she will not marry above her age, her station, her degree, something like that. So, he's nice and young. He's not a boy. He's not young enough for a boy. Right. I don't know. What, your age? 17-ish? Let him approach, call in my gentlewoman. And then Maria comes in and she says, give me my veil. We'll hear once more Orsino's embassy. Now, what we're going to then hear is Viola's speech that she's written and learned as she tries to woo, it's a great word woo, isn't it? She tries to woo Olivia for her, for her boss, for her master. 
to get that focus in a bit, sorry. Is that better? I'm annoying, aren't I? Okay. Uh, the Honourable Lady of the House, which is she? Speak to me, I shall answer for her. Your will? And so she begins, most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. Habiba, why is that funny? Because she can't feel on. She can't see your face. She can't see any faces. So we, what's that telling us about maybe love and attraction in this play? In, yeah, yeah, thank you, Daisy. In look, superficial. Okay. I pray you tell me if this be the lady of the house, for I never saw her. I'd be loath to cast away my speech. I don't want to waste it on the wrong person. Besides that it is excellently well penned, I've taken great pains to con it. It's very well written, and it's taken, it's taken me a while to learn it off by heart. And Olivia replies with, Whence came you, sir? Where are you from? So she's interested. She's intrigued, isn't she? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. So... She can't really go on because she's learned a speech off by heart and she doesn't want to deviate from it she needs to remember. Good gentle one, give me modest assurance, if you be the lady of the house, that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? Now, this is where our notes are always helpful, look. Get my horrible nails out from under that camera. A comedian is a professional actor. So not a stand-up as we'd understand it these days. An example of the sinister usage feared by Viola at 171, i.e. an impatient riposte to Viola's insistence on confining herself to her part. Okay, so she's basically worried about being kind of misused. Are you a comedian? A professional actor. No, my profound heart, and yet by the very fangs of malice, I swear, I am not that I play. So this is the first big bit of highlight I'm going to do here. Dead easy quotation that one to learn about Viola. Deception and disguise. But in this weirdly, ironically honest way. Are you the lady of the house? And Olivia basically says, get on with it. Tell, t give me this speech. Get it over and done with. But we're already seeing that she's starting to be intrigued by this young man. Alas, I took great pains to study it, and tis poetical. Tis the more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. No, oh, I don't want to hear it. It's going to be false. It's not going to be worth listening to. I heard you were saucy at my gates and allowed your approach rather to wonder at you than to hear you. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. So th those are uh, um, Viola's options. Be gone or be brief. It is not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. What do you think Olivia means there? It is not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. So look at our notes if we're not sure. Go on, Eva. Right, so lovely answer, yes. This idea that we are um, governed by the moon, which moon we're born under, which star sign we're born under, and then the changing of the moon. Um, I'm sure we can also think of a more modern approach to why women might be uh, short-tempered uh, when it is not that time of moon with them to be bothered about these things. 
will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. So Maria automatically assumes then that Viola's about to leave and we've got a return to what kind of imagery? Maisie? What kind of imagery have we got there? We've got hoist sail, good swabber, I am to hull here a little longer. Oh, what, sorry? No, she will, okay. No worries. No worries, Naomi? Um, like the sea. The sea, that, remember that nautical imagery. Right? What's it doing here, though, that it hasn't done before? How is it different to the nautical imagery we've seen before? Go on, Sophia. Right, so we've, like, which other one are we talking about, then? <laughs> You're right. Go on, who's going to help her out? So. <laughs> Maddie can barely stay awake. Where have we seen nautical imagery before? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just give me the quotation or, or paraphrase it, Maddie. Right, so when a seaner talks about his love, receiveth as the sea, and it's all about it being like tempestuous, but here we're on a boat and he's going to hull here. Sorry, it keeps saying he, she. Is going to hull here. She's going to stay here a little bit longer. So we've had imagery associated with the sea to do with shipwrecks and things being moved about, but now we're being still. Sure, you have some hideous matter to deliver when the courtesy of it is so fearful. Speak your office. And she says, it alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. No, nope, not come here to fight. Don't want anything from you, but it's just for you to hear. And yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? How does Viola explain why she might have begun rudely? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't imagine Sir Toby was particularly polite when he answered the door. Lovely. And then remember that Viola is Cesario, is a woman. What would we like to say here about that aspect in relation to these lines? What I am and what I would are as secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity, to any other's profanation. What is maidenhead? It's your virginity, right. So isn't that an interesting... Are men bothered about their virginity at this time? Or any time, really? No. Why are women bothered about it? Because it's... It means a lot. It's valuable especially to women of higher status, it's valuable, isn't it? So she says, what I am and what I, like who I am and, and what I'm up to are as secret as virginity. Like, would a man use that phrase? It's interesting, isn't it? It's like a little slip. And then she says, but it's only for you. If you hear it, it's divinity. If anybody else hears it, it's like a profanation. And Olivia is um, persuaded by this, actually, and uh, says, OK, what is your text? Most sweet lady, a comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? So, a comfortable doctrine... Bringing religious comfort. Oh, off to a good start. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom. In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method, in the first of his heart. So, this speech that's about to be delivered comes from Orsino's heart. It just means... Yes, it means behind the boobs, but 
Osina doesn't have boobs, so it's just his bosom, his heart. Yes. But what image? What image is this evoking from Act One, Scene Four? What's this linking back to? How did? Excuse me, you're making me yawn. How did Osina? What imagery did Orsino use? When talking with Cesario about how Cesario knows his secrets. Daisy? It was exactly that. I have unclasped to thee the book of my secret soul. So that imagery is being picked up on again here, showing that understanding that Viola has of Orsino. Oh, I've read it. It's heresy. If you know more to say. So she's instantly dismissive. Yeah, not interested. Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? Was that part of, like, the plan? As Orsino said, you're allowed to look at me. You are now out of your text. Actually, quite a reasonable thing because, you know, Olivia really should be wearing, if she's in mourning, she should be wearing a veil all of the time. So, is this part of what should be allowed? But, we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. Is it not well done? Tell me about Viola's response. She's quite full of herself. Go on. <clears throat> yeah, okay, sorry. So here, there's a there's a, a sense of a bit of vanity. Am I, am I not beautiful? And then, sorry, ta and then Viola's response, Maddie? Isn't she sort of saying, like, if it's all, like, natural? <laughs> yeah, excellent done, if God did it all. Now, that sounds stereotypically like two women, doesn't it? Hmm. Yeah, lovely. Got a face full of makeup on. And Olivia says, "'Tis in grain, sir, twill endure wind and weather." Yeah, the wind and the rain aren't going to wash it off. It's natural. But why do you think Viola says that? Yeah. Bit of envy, yeah. What she realised here? Oh, she's, she's pretty. Yeah. And the person she loves, loves her. So, Viola recovers herself. And if we look at our notes, they tell us that when we get here, uh, Viola suddenly changes tone and turns to verse. Paying Olivia a Petrarchan compliment. Ooh, why is that interesting to us? Joe? Sure. Who's Petrarchan? Orsino, a parody of the Petrarchan lover. Yes? Typical of love poetry. Right? It's like she remembers that she can't say stuff like that. <laughs> Because she's meant to be Cesario. Oh, yes, tis, tis beauty truly blent. Who's red and white, nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Then she uses that to persuade. What's the persuasive technique that's used here? What's she doing? What's her line of argument, Sophia? It's exactly that. And a bit more. Keep going. If you don't have a baby. If you don't have a baby. Because that's the only thing this woman can contribute to society. Is a baby as beautiful as her. So again, it's very superficial, isn't it? You are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. So we've got a nice bit of alliteration there.
And then the copy is a metaphor for a child. And how does Olivia respond? She's, she's got a response to this, which is... Rosie, any thoughts? No. Not sure on this one? Charlotte? Sophia? Yeah, oh, it's almost that. She basically says, I'll, I'll make a list. I'll, I'll give out diverse schedules of my beauty. Right? Olivia proposes circulation of a written catalogue of her graces as the form of copy she will leave. I'll just make a list. Um, here. Two lips in different red, two grey eyes with lids to them, a neck, a chin. Because Viola, Viola said, this beauty, it would be such a waste if that went to the grave. So you should have a baby. She says, I don't need to have a baby. I'm just going to make a list of what I look like. And people can remember me like that. She's well matched, isn't she? I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompensed, though you were crowned the non pareil of beauty. He says, oh, if only you could give back to my master some of the love that he has for you. How does he love me? Well, let's have a look at this. <sighs> what do you want to say about this line? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Suction. <laughs> tears, groans and sighs. He is, yes. What else is it? If someone's acting like that when they're in love, it's quite a... Someone just said something? An exaggeration? Do you feel like it's a bit of an act? Yeah. Oh! oh. <gasps> it's a performance, isn't it? Oh, I forgot it was recording, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Oh, well. It's not me, it's Shakespeare. What does Olivia do here? I'm asking these questions. I'm getting the sense that not all of you have read this ahead. Or if you have, you haven't used your notes. I can see some excellent annotation over here, however. Marie? Well, she just says that she, she can't learn, but then there's like 50 things that are really <laughs> good about him. Yeah, like, I can't love him. Um, he's like really perfect. He He's, um, he's virtuous, noble, he's of great estate, fresh and stainless youth, in voices well divulged, free, learned, valiant. How does he look? Uh, great. But yeah, I cannot love him. What do you want then? What do you want, Olivia? Well, let's try and answer that. Why can't she love him? Yeah. She's, is it back to this idea that she wants somebody lower than her? Maybe. Let's just pause that now as a bit of a question. So why can't she love him? I mean, do you know what? One of the most simple answers might just be because it adds that complication to the plot. We're not going to have this plot moving forward, are we? If she suddenly turns around and goes, do you know what? Now I've thought about it. He's mint. Yeah. Yeah, get, get back there and tell him wedding is tomorrow. It's on. If I did love you in my master's flame, with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. What do you notice there about the language? Faith, do you want to, even if you're not sure what to say about it, what's, what do you see that's interesting there about some of those words? Um, 
Right, so that word flame, brilliant. What's the next interesting word? Deadly. Deadly. Go on, where's a deadly life? What about suffering? I mean, is this love? Yeah? Oh, you're such a poetic soul, Sophia. Got that juxtaposition. Oh, that's not what I meant to put at all. Um, oxymoron. How can you have a deadly life? But all of it's very negative imagery, isn't it, about love? Fire and suffering and basically being a zombie. Is that, is that what you're checking off? Is that what you're on future relationship? I don't want a relationship unless it involves fire and some suffering. And then she says, well, what would you do? Now, when Viola gives her response here, who's she really speaking to? Pardon? <laughs> Did you just say Dave? <laughs> the Duke. Dave, he's in the kitchens, isn't he? He's the potato scrubber. Plot twist. I'm not being, there's no Dave. Don't think Dave was really a Shakespearean name. Um, okay. She says, I would make me a willow cabin at your gate. Willow, symbol, emblem of sad love. Just before Desdemona dies at the end of Othello, she sings the Willow song. I won't sing it to you now. No one needs that. I sing on a Wednesday. And call upon my soul within the house. Who is my soul? What is my soul? It is a deep question. But in this context, it means... Yeah. Write loyal cantons of condemned love and sing them loud even in the dead of night. Hello your name to the reverberate hills and make the babbling gossip of the air cry out, Olivia! Oh, you should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. Oh, is that how we get someone to love us? Pity? <laughs> Naomi just kind of did a, a Wallace and Gromit like... <clears throat> Yeah. Can you highlight that though? Because that's going to come up later. Pity being a degree to love. You might do much. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more, unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. She wants to see him again. Fare you well. I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. There's lots going on in this play about love and, and money, basically. Of love being bought, of love being a kind of commerce, a trade. I am no feed post lady. Keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. There it is again. Love make his heart of flint that you shall love, and let your fervour like my master's be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. That's how I'd like you to address me from now on. Fair cruelty. And off, he, off she goes. What is your parentage? Well, did I say that for? When I was at university, I had a bit of a crush on one of the boys next door in the student flats. And when we came back after Christmas, I'd obviously not seen him over Christmas. And then um, I saw him in the co-op. And I did a bit of a daisy, right? I saw him and I, uh, and I went to say hello and how are you at the same time. And I just went, 
Hey! <laughs> yeah, I had one of those moments, and he just kind of went, "All right," and walked away. Like, and you know, after I told my friend Virginia was with me, and I was, "What was that? What was she?" Was crying, laughing at this point. Um, and we still joke about it now. How are you? Olivia's kind of doing the same, but on her own. What is your parentage? What did, what did I say that for? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Oh, Olivia, you've got that a bit wrong. Oh, thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions and spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Woo! Not too fast, soft, soft. Unless the master were the man. Oh, she wishes here, doesn't she, that Caesarian and Orsino could change places. But what do we notice here? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Go on, Rosie, tell me about that. Um, it's like, how can someone fall in love so quickly? And like, there's been no previous disease as well as the plague. Excellent. We're back to this association of love with like something you catch, like the plague. Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. It's all about looks, isn't it? Well, le well, let it be. <laughs> what ho, Malvolio? Here, madam, at your service. Um, and then run after him, give him this ring. Tell him I need to see him tomorrow. I do, I know not what. And fear to find mine eye too great a flatterer for my mind. So she's already beginning to worry that perhaps her eye is taking over from her judgment. So what does she do about that? Does she run after Malvolio and say, come back, don't take the ring. This is crazy, he's just a servant. What does she do? <laughs> ah, fate. <laughs> Oh, oh, well, let's just see what happens. What's the title of our play? What you will. Eh, whatever. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be, and be this so. Whew. La la. Why is the play about Fortnite? <laughs> <laughs> no, what people. Mm. No, 